In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about uniform probability models. So let's go ahead and dive right in to a few practice problems. So an airline company quotes a flight time of two hours and five minutes for its flights from Toronto to Halifax. Suppose we believe the actual flight times are uniformly distributed between two hours and two hours and 20 minutes. Show the graph of the probability density function for the flight time. Well, we're told that they're uniformly distributed, so we can go ahead and just draw our uniform distribution. We know that it looks like a rectangle. On our y-axis, we have our function of x. On our x-axis, we have some variable. Now, we need to find what are our values for a and b. So we're working in hours here, but there's also minutes. So why don't we just say that we're just going to work in minutes. So our value for a, two hours, really is equal to 120 minutes, right? Two hours is equal to 120 minutes. 60 times two is 120. And two hours and 20 minutes is equal to 140. So our values of b and a are 120 and 140. And from there, we can calculate our function of x, which is equal to one over b minus a which is equal to 1 over 140 minus 120, which is equal to 1 over 20, which is equal to 0 0.05. So we're saying that the width of this rectangle is equal to 0 0.05. Now, if we want to be absolutely sure that we've done this right, we remember that the equation for the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. And we know that in a uniform probability distribution, the area of the rectangle is equal to one. So our length 140 minus 120 is equal to 20 times our width of 0 0.05, which indeed is equal to one. So we can rest assured that we've done that part right. <clears throat> so the next part, question B. What is the probability that the flight will be no more than five minutes late? Well, we're quoted a flight time of two hours and five minutes. So five minutes late would be two hours and 10 minutes. Now we're working, on, or we're working only in minutes. So two hours and 10 minutes is actually equal to 130 minutes. So what we're asking is what is the probability the plane arrives somewhere between 120 and 130 minutes. So B, we remember that the probability that C is less than or equal to X less than or equal to D is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. So in this case, we've got 130 minus 120 divided by 140 minus 120. So we have 10 divided by 20, which is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So what is the, for C, what is the probability that the flight will be more than 10 minutes late? Well, again, we're quoted a flight time of two hours and five minutes or 125 minutes. So 10 minutes late would be 135 minutes. And we're really interested in what is the probability that X falls between 135 and 140. So the probability that C is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to D, is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. So this is equal to 140 minus 135 divided by 140 minus 120, which is equal to five divided by 20, which is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, and then finally, what is the expected flight time? So we'll just do this right here. So our expected value is equal to a plus b divided by two, right? <clears throat> so this is equal to 120 plus 140 
divided by 2, which is equal to 260, divided by 2, which is equal to 130. So if we go back up here to our nice little graph, our expected value is at 130 minutes right in the center. So 50% of the observations should occur above the expected value and 50% of the observations should fall below the expected value. And just like that, we have completed our uh, first practice problem. So let's do another practice problem just for good measure. So a Gallup daily tracking survey found that the mean daily discretionary spending by Americans earning over $90,000 a year was $136 per day. The discretionary spending excluded home purchases, vehicle purchases, and regular monthly bills. Let X represent the discretionary spending per day and assume a uniform probability density function that applies with a function of X of 0.00625 for A less than or equal to X less than or equal to B. So before we even jump into this problem, before we even try and tackle A, let's draw out what we know. So we know we have a uniform distribution, looks something like this. We do not know our values for A and B, that's fine. Um, we have our function of X on our Y axis and we actually know what this is. This is told to us in our question, 0 0.00625. And we're also told that the mean daily discretionary spending was $136 per day. So we can write that in here, so $136 was our mean. Okay. So we can then solve. So find the values for of A and B for the probability density function. Well, interestingly, we could go about this a uh, number of different ways, but let's go about a way that is relatively straightforward. So our function of X is equal to one over B minus A. Well, we know that our function of x is equal to 0 0.00625. So this is equal to 1 over b minus a, which means that b minus a must equal 1 over 0 0.00625. So 1 divided by 0 0.00625 is going to be 160. So what does that mean? Well, effectively, that means that the span between A and B is equal to 160. We also know that the expected value is exactly halfway between A and B. Right, because we know that the expected value is equal to A plus B divided by two. So we know our expected value. So um, this is just 136 is equal to A plus B divided by two. So we could do this one of two ways, but we know that exactly halfway, we should have 80 in each direction. So what we can then solve for here is B is equal to the expected value plus 0 0.5 times B minus A which is equal to 136 plus 0 0.5 
and we've solved for b minus a to be times 160. So this is 136 plus 80. So 136 plus 80 gives us a value for b of 216. In the other direction, a is equal to the expected value minus 0 0.5 times b minus a, which is equal to 136 minus 0 0.5 times 160, which is equal to 136 minus 80, which is equal to 56. Okay, so our values for A and B, our value for A is 56, and our value for B is 216. Now, if we want to double check here, we can obviously do that. So we have our little expected value here. So if we want to do the expected value is equal to A plus B divided by 2, which is equal to 56 plus 216 divided by 2, gives us 272 divided by 2. which is 136. So our expected value is exactly the same. So we know we have a good values for A and B here. <clears throat> so what is the probability that consumers in this group have daily discretionary spending between $100 and, $100 and $200? So what does this really mean? Well, let's just get rid of some of this just to make it a little bit cleaner here. So what we're saying is what is the probability that they're between 100 and $200. So what is the probability that they fall in this green shaded region? Okay, so the probability that C is less than or equal to X less than or equal to D is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. So the probability that 100 is less than or equal to X less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to 200, right, that's the value we're looking for, is equal to 200 minus 100 divided by our value for B, which is 216, minus 56, our value for A. So we get 100 divided by 216 minus 56 by 160, so 100 divided by 160 is equal to 0 0.625. Okay. What is the probability that consumers in this group have daily discretionary spending of $150 or more? Okay, so we can just revisit this graph, $150 or more. Let's just pretend that this is 150. This is not to scale. But effectively, what we're asking is, what is the probability that they're between 150 and 216? So the probability that C is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to D, is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. In this case, the probability that 150 less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 216, is equal to 216 minus 150 divided by 216 minus 56. So 216 minus 150 gives us 66 divided by 160 equals 0 0.4125. And then finally, 
Our last question is, what is the probability that consumers in this group have daily discretionary spending of $80 or less? So $80 or less, what is the probability they fall in this green shaded region? So in other words, between 56 and $80. So the probability of C less than or equal to X less than or equal to D is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. So the probability that 56 is less than or equal to X less than or equal to 80 is equal to 80 minus 56 divided by 216 minus 56, which is equal to 24 divided by 160, which is equal to 0 0.15. And just like that, we have completed all the questions that we have been asked. That's it for this video. But if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.